Welcome back to Newton's Laws of Motion, The Adventure of Tonthin, and we're going to be doing problems involving tension. Okay, let's look at this example. A 5 kilogram mass is hanging from the ceiling. What is the tension in the string? If someone grabs a string and pulls it upward so it accelerates at 5 meters per second squared, what will be the tension in the string? Okay, so how we're going to do this kind of problem is first draw a free body diagram. Force of gravity, force of tension. As we learned, force of gravity is just equal to the mass times gravity. So it's gonna be five times 10, which is 15 newtons. In this case, since it's not moving, and these are the only two forces in the y direction, these two have to be the same, and they have to cancel each other out, 15 newtons like that. So what is the tension in the string? 50 newtons. Part B is someone grabs the string and pulls it upwards, so it accelerates at five meters per second squared, what will be the tension in the string? So this is different now because now this uh, box is going to be accelerating at a rate of 5 meters per second squared. So now the force of tension isn't going to be 50, it's going to be something else. How we're going to find this is we're going to plug into our formula. Sum of all force in the y equals mass and acceleration in the y. Force in the y, we have force of tension. Force of gravity going down equals the mass times acceleration in the y. Force of tension, we don't know, that's what we're looking for. Force of gravity is 50, mass is 5, and it's accelerating at a rate of 5 meters per second squared. We do a little bit of algebra and we see that the force of tension is now going to equal 75 newtons. Okay? So tension is just another force like everything else, but we're going to be doing a few problems involving tension. If M1 is equal to 5 kilograms and M2 is equal to 7 kilograms, what is the tension in each string? So we have one string here and another string here. Let's first draw the free body diagram of everything. So this one, we're going to call this force of gravity. And then we're going to call this force of tension 1. What's important to know is actually this string is also pulling down on this. So we could draw another arrow going down. I'm going to call this force of tension 2. And if we look over here, I'm going to draw the free body diagram. This way we have force of gravity of this. And then we have force of tension 2 over here. Uh, force of gravity of this one is going to be 7 times 10, 70 newtons. And this one is going to be 50 newtons. What is the tension in each string? So what's going to be easier is to do this force of tension of the second one first. So since they're both not moving, and this box is being pulled down this way, if we just looked at this, sum of all forces in the y equals mass times acceleration in the y, we have force of tension 2 going up, force of gravity going down, mass times acceleration in the y. Force of tension 2, which we're looking for, force of gravity, which is 70, equal to mass 7, Accelerate. it's not accelerating at all, so this is just a 0. So force of tension 2 is equal to 70 newtons. What's important to know is for this tension piece, this string is pulling up on this box with 70 newtons, but this tension, which is the same string, is gonna be pulling down on this box with 70 newtons. So even though it's the same piece of string, it can be pulling in different directions. So now, when we look at this free body diagram over here to find what the tension of one is, we can just do sum of all force in the y equals mass times acceleration in the y, we have three forces. We have force of tension one going up, force of tension two going down, and force of gravity going down. Force of tension one, we don't know, that's what we're looking for. Force of tension two is 70, so minus 70. Force of gravity, which is 50, equal to mass A, acceleration zero. Again, it's not moving. So force of tension one is gonna equal 120 newtons. Another way to look at this is this string is carrying both this weight and this weight. So if this is 50 newtons and this is 70, it's gonna be 120 newtons. It might be a little bit simpler to do, but I just wanted to show it mathematically. Okay, let's look at the next example. So this is where it becomes a little bit more difficult because it's 2D. To hang a 6.2 kilogram pot of flour, a gardener uses two wires, one attached horizontally to a wall, the other sloping at an angle of 40 degrees and attached to the ceiling. Find the tension in each wire. Okay, so again, we want to draw a free body diagram of this. We have 
force of gravity, which is going to equal to mass times gravity, so 6.2 times 10, so this is going to be 62 newtons. And then over here, I'm going to draw this angled one. I'm going to draw the component of this, so we have this at 40 degrees. So, we that's all we know right now is this force of gravity. However, we know that this thing isn't moving, so the acceleration the x and the acceleration the y is both zero. So that means everything in the x direction has to cancel out all the forces, and all the forces in the y direction have to cancel out. Let's just look at the y direction. So this is the only force we know in the y direction, but the only other force in the y direction is this force of tension 2 in the y. And since these are the only two in the y direction, and it's not moving, that means these two have to cancel out. So we know this force of tension 2 is equal to section 62 newtons in the y direction. Now, what we know is we can find what this uh, tension is using sine. So we know sine of 40 is equal to opposite, which is 62, over hypotenuse, which is this force of tension 2. Put this in our calculator. And then we find that sine 40, oops, oops, sorry, 62 divided by sine 40 is going to be equal to 96.45 newtons. Okay, 96.45 newtons. For the set first tension over here, what we should know is whatever this tension is over here, it's going to equal this tension over here. Since it's not moving the x direction, the forces in the x have to cancel out, and these are the only two in the x direction. So I'm going to use, uh, let's use tan to figure this out. So tan of 40 is equal to opposite, which is 62, over force of tension 1 in the x direction, sorry, in the x direction. Oh, force of tension 2 in the x direction. And then we get force of tension 2 in the x is equal to 62 divided by tan of 40, 73.89. So that means this is also, tension 1 is going to be equal to 73.89 newtons. If the second wire slopes at an angle of 90 degrees, what are the tension forces? So, let me just draw this out. How this would work is, we have this hook here, this flower pot, and then like this. What would happen is, this force of tension would carry all the weight. So it would just be like this, force of gravity, force of tension two, and then what happens is, this is just slack and doesn't do anything. So, uh, force of tension two, would equal to be the same as this, which is 62 newtons. Okay? All right, let's look at another example. Doo, doo, doo. A 1.84 kilogram bag of clothespins hangs in the middle of a clothesline, causing it to sag by an angle of 0.35 degrees. Find the tension in the clothesline. All right, again, let's kind of draw this out. I'm gonna draw it out over here. So this is the midpoint right there. So we have force of gravity, which is equal to 1.84 times 10, so 18.4 newtons. And then we have this wire with a certain amount of tension. We're just gonna call this the force of tension. Another thing that we know is this angle here is 3.5 degrees. 3.5 degrees. What we should know is all the forces of tension in the Y should cancel out because again, this clothespin is not moving. So, since they both have the same angle and only because they both have the same angle, each of these are gonna be half of 18.4. So this is gonna be 9.2 newtons on this side and 9.2 newtons on that side. Once we know that, we can find what this force of tension is going to be by using sine. Sine of 3.5 is equal to opposite, which is 9.2, divided by hypotenuse, which is the force of tension. This will give us the force of tension, 9.2, divided by sine of 3.5, and we get uh, 150.7 newtons.
Okay, so it's very tight. At what sag angle will the tension of clothesline have a magnitude of 175 newtons? So we're saying if this force of tension is equal to 175 newtons, what would this angle be over here? So we know no matter no matter what happens here, th these two are going to be the same. So this is still going to be not these. The force of tension, the y direction, is going to cancel out with the force of gravity. So if this is 9.2 and this is 175, now we can find what that angle is by using inverse of sine. Inverse of sine equals opposite 9.2 divided by hypotenuse 175. Okay. Opposite 9.2 divided by 175. So this is going to be 3.01 degrees. Okay. All right, and let's do one last one. Okay, so let's look at this problem here. A picture hangs on the wall suspended by two strings. One, two. Uh, tension one is 1.7 newton and hangs at an angle of 65 degrees above the horizontal. What is this uh, tension two if it hangs at an angle of 32 degrees? Okay, so let's look at this. So we know this string here has a force of tension of 1.7 newtons. We're looking for what this force of tension is over here, force of tension two. What we should know is since this isn't moving in the x direction at all or the y direction, the force of tension in the x direction should be the same. So the force of tension 1 in the x should be the same as force of tension 2 in the x. The reason it's not the same in the y direction is because they have different angles. So let's find what this force of tension 1 in the x is going to be. We're going to do that by doing uh, 1.7 times cosine of 65. 1.7 times cosine of 65 is 0 0.72. So we know this is 0 0.72 newtons, but now let's find what this force of tension 2 is. We can find that by again using cosine. So cosine of 32 is equal to adjacent, which is 0 0.72, over hypotenuse, which is this force of tension 2. And then we get force of tension 2 equal to 0.72 divided by cosine of 32 and we get 0 0.85 newtons. Uh, next question is what is the mass of the picture? Again, so what we know is the mass of this picture is going to be force of gravity which is equal to mass times 10. So what we know is everything in the y direction has to cancel out. So everything in the y direction has to cancel out. So let's first find what the force of tension 2 is in the y direction and what the force of tension 1 is in the y direction. So over here I'm going to just do 1.7 times sine of 65 and I get 1.54 newtons. And over here I'm going to do 0.85 times sine of 32 and I get 0.45 newtons. Once I know that now I'm going to plug into our formula. Sum of all forces in the y equals mass times acceleration in the y. And we have three forces in the y. We have force of tension 1 in the y going up, force of tension 2 in the y going up, and then force of gravity going down. Force of tension 1 is 1.54 Force of tension 2 is 0 0.45, 0 0.45, and force of gravity is mass times 10. Lastly, over here, we don't know what the mass is, but we know this isn't moving at all in the y direction, so the acceleration is 0. Oops, so this all becomes 0. And now we're just doing a little bit of algebra to find what this mass is. So this is going to be 0 0.19. Alright guys, thanks for watching.